Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 1025. March 19th, 1937. Today I united myself in spirit with the adoration that is taking place in our house, 40-hour adoration in Krakow. But my soul was full of torments, and some strange kind of apprehension was piercing my heart. Because of this, I redoubled my prayers. Suddenly, I saw the gaze of God reaching into the depths of my heart. As I sat down to a very tasty breakfast, I said to the Lord, Thank you for these gifts, but my heart is dying of longing for you, and nothing earthly is tasty to me. I desire the food of your love. Today I was drawn by some mysterious force to act. I must resist this attraction or else I would follow it at once. March 21st, 1937, Palm Sunday. During Mass, my soul was steeped in the bitterness and suffering of Jesus. Jesus gave me to understand how much he had suffered in that triumphal procession. Hosanna was reverberating in Jesus' heart as an echo of crucify. Jesus allowed me to feel this in a special way. The doctor did not allow me to go to the chapel to attend the Passion Service, although I had a great desire for it. However, I prayed in my own room. Suddenly I heard the bell in the next room, and I went in and rendered a service to a seriously sick person. When I returned to my room, I suddenly saw the Lord Jesus, who said, My daughter, you give me greater pleasure by rendering me that service than if you had prayed for a long time. I answered, But it was not to you, Jesus, but to that patient that I rendered this service. And the Lord answered me, Yes, my daughter, but whatever you do for your neighbor, you do for me. O my Jesus, give me wisdom. Give me a mind great and enlightened by your light, and this only, that I may know you better, O Lord. For the better I get to know you, the more ardently will I love you, the sole object of my love. In you my soul drowns, in you my heart dissolves. I know not how to love partially, but only with the full strength of my soul and the total ardor of my heart. You yourself, O Lord, have enkindled this love of mine for you. In you my heart has drowned forever." March 22, 1937. As I was talking today to a certain person, I recognized that she was suffering greatly in spirit, although exteriorly she pretended that she was very happy and was not suffering at all. I felt inspired to tell her that what was troubling her was a temptation. When I disclosed to her what was torturing her, she burst into tears and told me that she had come to see me precisely to speak to me because she felt that it would bring her relief. The suffering was of such a kind that the soul was being attracted by God's grace on the one hand and by the world on the other. She was going through a terrible struggle that brought her to the point of weeping like a little child, but she went away soothed and set at peace. During Holy Mass, I saw the Lord Jesus nailed upon the cross amidst great torments. A soft moan issued from his heart. After some time he said, I thirst, I thirst for the salvation of souls. Help me, my daughter, to save souls. Join your sufferings to my passion and offer them to the Heavenly Father for sinners. When I see that the burden is beyond my strength, I do not consider or analyze it or probe into it, but I run like a child to the heart of Jesus and say only one word to him, You can do all things. And then I keep silent, because I know that Jesus himself will intervene in the matter. And as for me, instead of tormenting myself, I use that time 
to love him. Monday of Holy Week I asked the Lord to let me take part in his sorrowful passion that I might experience in soul and body, to the extent that this is possible for a creature, his bitter passion. I asked to experience all the bitterness in so far as this was possible, and the Lord answered that he would give me this grace, and that on Thursday after Holy Communion he would grant this in a special way. There is a type of devotion in the Catholic Church called the 40-hour devotion. It takes place over a weekend, often in a parish. The Eucharist is exposed on the altar for the whole weekend for 40 hours, and people sign up to spend an hour in adoration before the Lord. So there is always someone in adoration, even during the night. Uh, the service concludes with benediction, uh, which is a blessing with the Eucharist exposed in the monstrance. Uh, such an adoration was to take place in St. Faustina's convent. She was still in the hospital, but she united in spirit with the adoration. The Lord pours out many graces uh, on a parish during such a weekend. On Palm Sunday, St. Faustina experienced the bitterness that Jesus felt that day. The same crowds who were shouting, Hosanna! to Jesus as a king would be calling for his death by crucifixion less than a week later. St. Faustina was not allowed to attend the Passion Sunday service, uh, but she assisted someone in a nearby room when she heard the bell ring. And Jesus was very pleased, and he told her that in this way she is helping Jesus in the sick person. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. Faustina was able to read the soul of someone and help her. This soul was being tormented by a temptation, and Faustina was able to recognize what was going on. From the cross, Jesus tells Faustina of his thirst for souls, and he asks for her assistance. Faustina also talks about being in almost impelled to begin the work that she wants to have begin, that the Lord wants to have begin on the divine mercy, but she has to resist this temptation. Of course, the Lord wants this work to go forward, but he wants her to be obedient to her spiritual director and to her superior, and he doesn't want her rushing off and trying to do anything on her own. This would be from the evil one. Faustina has a wonderful solution when a burden is beyond her strength. Like a child, she flies to Jesus and says, you can do all things. And then she doesn't fret anymore. She, sim she simply loves him and leaves everything in his hands. We should learn from this.